Hey, what's up everybody? So, uh, welcome in, I'm Andy. Today, we're going to try and break some things. This is Spitfire versus i9 and Ableton and, uh, you know, everything. So I was super curious, like, you know, if I was to throw like tons of plugins at this rig, how much could it handle? It seems to handle when I do rock sets and, and stuff, everything that when we're stream when I'm streaming and, and things like that, like it's so rock solid. It, I never seem to get to a place where it's hiccuping on itself. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to break this thing, right? So the computer, well, before we get into all that, I should say, if you get to the end of this, if you get through some portion of this, whatever, and you found it useful or enjoyed it in any kind of way, hit like or subscribe. Do the things that help the people like me be people like me, I guess. I don't know. You don't want to enable this, do you? You might not. Rethink it. Never mind. Don't do it. It's a bad idea, right? It's a bad idea. Let's go. Let's go over to Raven. Yeah. Look at this ridiculousness, right? It, look at all these tracks, right? So basically let me start turning a bunch of this stuff off gosh that's like 50 things can you imagine if you had to do this with your mouse it would take so much longer uh this is a, a slate raven touch screen interface um and so i have a video on it actually there might be a link coming up here check it ravens are awesome not only is it a huge time saver, but it lets you get back into mixing and making music with your whole body, which is how music was meant to be. Okay, so we've turned everything off. Not really. We've muted things, right? So all these plugins are actually still running. So um, the first one, I think this first one is a soft piano from Labs, right? So stop that. And I basically just start, it's a simple little loop. That's the loop. Like totally simple. Um, and yes, it is worth noting that we are running without any kind of hiccups or anything right now. What else is open on this computer? iTunes, notes, notes can close. We don't need notes iTunes was our little background music. We'll leave that open. Why not? Um, and so you can see what our, our processor's doing according to Ableton up here. Um, we're at 70% load, something like that. Now, if you do look up, the, up here at the iStat, and I do recommend a tool like iStat, I think it's called iStat Menus, just to really like let you know what you're getting. And there's finally a little bit of crackles as we're fooling around with some display stuff. Um, so it's running pretty hard. You can see all the all eight cores are engaged pretty heavily. I'm just kind of letting it fizzle and see what crackles and what doesn't. So I actually have, if I remember correctly, up to track 55 is actually turned on. And the rest of the plugins, no, no, look, they're all on. Never mind. I thought I had turned off these ones. I took, I turned off two on the top. So we've got 60, 59 instances of Spitfire plugins running. So let's see what they are. First one was Labs. The second one is a BBC plugin. The BBC Orchestra. And I should say too, as we start here, every single plug has, every single channel has this on it, which is a virtual mix rack plugin from Slate Digital. So all of this is going through a virtual console and every single channel has the LA-2A model compressor just doing its warm thing. So that's happening on all channels. On our master channel, we've got the SSL bus compressor model thing. Um, probably nothing in here. 550 little top boost again very very sporadic with the hiccups and uh, a limiter so easy enough there nothing on the group now back over here we've got uh, BBC this plugin so here comes some strings and basically this is just all junk that just was just stuck right in uh, this is not going to be good music per se this is just to hear stuff so We'll bump through every one of these tracks. So we're adding a bunch of strings, it sounds like. Or probably we're going through the orchestra.
And so those 11 are the BBC thing. And if I double click here, you can see here's the MIDI. So if you're more used to a piano, uh, piano roll editor, you know, like a timeline like this, um, basically what we're doing, we're just looping one section of this timeline by doing this in uh, Session View in Ableton. So you can see that's looping. <clears throat> There's one clip, let's go to the next one playing along with it. So you'd have to just kind of imagine all these stacked up. You know, so pretty typical of something you might score. So let's start turning on some more tracks. We've got the percussion plugin now, the originals, cinematic percussion. So then we've got next up is the originals brass. Epic Brass and Woodwinds. And we've got uh, up to channel 16 or up to 21 on those. So you can see what those were, the percussion guys. While I'm thinking of it, I'll show you the, uh, the specs on this machine. This is 2019 iMac. I bought it from the iMac refurbished store, you know, so it's like nothing fancy. But it is the i9, the top processor, which is it was like $2,000 or so. It wasn't, it wasn't like super expensive. This is how much RAM it came with. I didn't add any more. Um, and that's pretty much the story. 24 gigabytes of RAM, i9. It's an iMac. It sits over there now. It is kind of noisy. The fan runs when I'm doing anything in Ableton and doing a lot of it. This fan, if you look up here, this number 2699, that it's usually sitting right around that 2700. Anything above 22, 2300, um, I'm, I'm hearing that fan. So uh, you'll notice these are baffles. Uh, these are acoustic panels from off different walls around here that I put have placed in front of this thing to kind of block some of that noise um, when I do more talky talky stuff you know because it's really it's really just kind of ridiculous uh, that fan thing uh, but outside of that um, everything is very very normal with this computer I mean and that's normal too I guess um, when you're really pushing the computer it's going to drive the fan for sure and I could probably do things to make that area cooler over there specifically and um, I, I might still it's a different conversation Back to this, let's add the next couple of tracks, our percussion. Again. And we've got some more brass, let's add those in. And we've go into another plugin, we've got Epic Strings. Originals Epic Strings. Some more brass. It's just duplicating things. And a whole pile of epic strings. Let it all come out. And then we have intimate strings. This one's on, let's let it go. That one's on, we'll turn it on. And that one. Okay. So, there we go. We have 58 tracks of Spitfire plugins running. And I think, yeah, and we're starting to crackle. So we're starting to break it. Now, I have one, uh, I have a piano. Because can I still, can I track? I would say so. Let's record a little loop, add to this.
seem to record just fine. Oh yeah, look at that. So we're definitely just, I think we're for sure at the max of like what can go on with this, uh, with these kinds of plugins. Now it's interesting as I look through here, this little, these, these lights down here, this is supposed to be your, uh, let's turn a little display on that tells us things. The CPU load meter displays the current CPU load for this track. A track with high CPU load is more demanding in resources. No kidding. Um, nothing's frozen in this project. It does tell you right there that you can freeze things, make things run better. Uh, I know we don't have it. We don't want to do that right now. We're trying to see just live plugins. How many can run? I'm kind of I'm kind of floored that it's 58 Spitfire plugins, a variety of plugins. Those are all they're you know. Generally, I think of orchestra plugins as being kind of heavy. Um, I could, we could try this with guitar plugins or something. Maybe do another one. Yeah, maybe that that'll be next. Like, how many how many guitar amps can we run at one time? Um, or draw with drums and kits. I don't know. Maybe that would tell. But this is uh, you never have to stack up that many tracks with stuff like that. I mean, the only time that you're any that you're ever doing stuff like that is is like this orchestra stuff like with that many tracks maybe you could do like a lot of synth stuff maybe something like that but um you know orchestra is really where that stuff happens um but what's interesting to me is that you've got the same plugins popping hard over here and not over here and i can't for the life of me figure out anything that these ones are doing different than these ones so i'm kind of skeptical of even of ableton's of this thing I've wondered about it before, how accurate it and useful it is, and I don't know. Why aren't any of these hitting even like one dot? If you know, let me know in the comments, because <laughs> I don't know. It's quite strange. So let's see what happens if we if we start, we lop on just for fun, these other tracks on top. Let's let these loose. That one's already on, shit. Okay, more fizzles faster. We're still playing back. Here's our Ableton settings. You can see 256 samples with whatever this driver compensation business is. I mean, it's no latency as far as I can tell. I could probably set this to 500. Let's set this to 500. See if this plays back any better. I can do things uh, at 500, at 512. Generally, you know, like that's not too much latency to to shut me down in most cases for you know some things. That's absolutely usable. It's like not crunching. It's taken a lot to get this to crunch. I have the sustain pedal on my foot held down. This is Ableton's grand piano. Generally, behavior like that on a piano plugin would, would destroy a computer. It'd just blow up. Um, so I don't know if it's this piano. It's from the MIDI packs that Ableton includes. Um, yeah, there it is. This grand piano. Uh, grand piano production. It's even it's this one. Um, maybe that's just super, super, super good and <laughs> doesn't crunch your world. But I mean, generally, this behavior. That destroys CPUs. Hear it? Or 
asking for it if you're doing that. But so like, I think we can probably safety say we safely say we got like 60 tracks of Spitfire stuff happening, which is like really kind of ridiculous. That's a lot of plugins to be running at one time without any kind of a. I can still track. Um, it, we seem to be able to do it at 256 or 512. Um, so my sound card for this um, and for this rig is a Focusrite uh, Red 4 Pre. So that counts. Uh, maybe it would be useful. Let's try this test again. With I've got a Scarlet 2i2 over there. So that's that would be the top of Focusrite's line and like the bottom Focusrite's line. And uh, so there's about $2,000 price difference between these two units. I'd be very curious to see if that has factors into this equation. If you think it does, put it in the comments. I have no idea. I'm going to like assume yes, that because I know with latency and things like that are definitely affected by the sound card and the drivers that they, uh, they write for the cards, for the interfaces. So it'd be, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I use that for my stream rig, but we could just pull it over and we'll do this test off of that, that 2i2 and see what happens. Not right now, you'll have to check back. Subscribe to the channel, see? It'd be cool things coming up that you might want to see. Um, but really that's like, there's nothing else to really do much with that except listen to annoying music, <laughs> I think. But uh, like I said, I'm pretty like, that's stupid. Who would I wouldn't I don't ever need 60 plugins of something so if there is a, like if there's a way if there's a different type of test that you'd like to see me do like a different combinations of plugins I have all the kinds of plugins you know whether it's synths or guitar amps and stuff like that uh, we can try and kind of break it in another way how are we gonna break this I want to break this computer I want to break it in less tracks though I want to break it in way less tracks how can we break it in way less tracks put your thinking caps on let a brother know in the comments, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, if you found any of this interesting or useful, sub! Why not? It doesn't cost a thing. It really helps out, like me, people that do this kind of thing. Hit the little thumbs up thing, which gets the algorithm to say, hey, I guess this video is useful. We should show it to some people. So help a guy out if you if you are so inclined. If you're not, cool. What else? Get some apple juice, call it a day, boom! And uh, yeah, on that note, rock your day. Cheers.